Welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Effort Show with Alex and Joe. And hey, unless you've been living under a rock, and uh, I'm looking at you, Patrick Starfish, unless you've been living under a rock, uh, you probably have heard about this thing called Shadow Dark. No. What is Shadow Dark? Shadow Dark is uh, probably one of the most successful uh, RPG Kickstarters in history. Um, yeah. It is the brainchild <laughs> of our good friend Kelsey Dion over at the Arcane Library. And it is this awesome system. Um, it really takes a lot of roots in index card RPG, in case folks mm -hmm. didn't know. Um, but it is a blend of these awesome vintage elements uh, yeah. with modern uh, gameplay mechanics. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, I think you can uh, go over to the, um, uh, the Arcane Library uh, website, uh, get your mm -hmm. hands on the free quick start. Uh, you could yep. start playing it today. Um, today and find and, it on her website or on drive through rpg yeah you can get it either spot perfect thanks joe and mm -hmm. you know if you missed out on the kickstarter i'm sure you'll be able to at least get the pdf here at some point uh, oh, get yeah, your hands yeah. on this awesome system joe and i love it uh and consequently uh we want to do this video yeah uh similar to our icrpg how to you know how to play we're gonna step by step this exactly so we're gonna thank see, you thigh master yeah we're gonna see two things today the first is we're going to build a character because mm -hmm. I don't have a character. Second, that character is going to go through a dungeon run by our very own intrepid DM, Joe. And Ooh, yeah, granted, Shadow Dark may not necessarily be designed for solo play. Like, it's kind of super deadly. Um, but I'm just crazy enough to give it a shot. Um, and, and I'm just cruel enough to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and certainly kidding, uh, if it will help you guys um it'll be uh it'll be well worth it hopefully i survive um we'll get a torch going in the i'm darkness. sure you'll survive oh wait no i don't cross my fingers for that one yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah right all right so without further ado let's dive right in and let's first of all build a character because yeah. i yeah so, yes Joe, let's see through the magic of television. <laughs> so, Joe. Yes. Step one. <laughs> Roll me 3D6 down the line. Yeah, so... Speaking um, of old school. Joe, you can't see, but our viewers will be able to see. I've got the character sheet up right here. I'm prepared to write down everything. And, and you said step one is 3D6 down the line? Yep, so step one, 3D6 down the line. Okay, st yes, yeah, step one, stats. 3D6 down the line. I think I have the dice roller going here. So let's... Well, he's doing that, folks. Um, these are all the stats you're familiar with. Yo, if you've played any iteration of Dungeons & Dragons or any of the OSR styled, you know, to use that term, uh, any of those style games, those retro clones, the BX, the, all of those, um, you know, all the stuff by Necrotic Gnome, the OSE, uh, old school essentials as were all of these games use that strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Some of them vary the order, but those were our six stats. Yep. Here we and go. Unlike our CRPG, we actually have our derivative stats or we have our, our numerical value and then our bonus modifier. So, uh, because they, they come into play the way the game works. Yep. Yep. So these are derivatives. So first strength, here we go. Come on strength. So a 10, okay? It's 10. So 10 strength. Let me just get that marked out on my sheet. So that's going to be a plus zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. It flats better than negative. Yep. All right. <laughs> Come on, dice. Get hot for me here. All right. Dexterity. Oh, a nine. Not very dexterous. So I think that's a negative one. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's see. Constitution. Hey, a 14. Nice. I'm, I'm digging that. So what is that, a plus two, Joe? Yes, indeed. 14 is a plus two. A lot of you folks might be noticing, uh, if you get the, the quick start or you were a backer and you already have access to the PDF, um, these stat modifiers, this whole table is... Very much, you know, what you'd be familiar with out of the uh, the fifth edition. Mm -hmm. Yep. Of the sure. Dungeons and the Dragons. All right. Intelligence. Am I intelligent? 
Hey. Ooh, all right. All right. 12. That, that has to be a plus one, I bet. Yep. Hitting on a plus one. Pretty like tasty. It. Like it. All right. Wisdom. My favorite. Hey. Ooh, 13. Nice. I'm still in that plus one range, but that is that is good. Yeah. I mean, this is this is shaping up, I feel like. Right. All right. Okay. And finally, charisma. Oh, Whoa. charisma is my best stat. <laughs> right? That's pretty amazing. This is the kind of character that uh, they are either pretty or they are very personable. Yeah. So what is that? 15? Is that still a plus two? Yep. 15 is uh, the end of the plus two range. Yeah. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Which is very cool. Yeah. So... Um, I do want to point out, folks, uh, if by chance, it's an optional rule right there on the stat page. If none of your stats are a 14 or higher, you can potentially re-roll an entire new set of stats. You know, check with your GM because it is listed as an optional rule. Yeah, but uh, it's a it's a good spot. Absolutely. Joe, what is next? Is that ancestry? next is our ancestry? Ancestry, yeah. yeah. So our choices here are dwarf, goblin, elf, half orc, halfling, or human. And yeah. Joe, you know me. If, I, if I'm going to test drive a system, we're, we're going yep. straight up human fighter. Yep. So it's a classic. <laughs> yep. So ancestry, human. <laughs> and as a human, because I'm bold, adaptable, and diverse, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to know the common language and one additional common language, which we'll yep. get to in a minute. Yep. Uh, and also, as a human, you're ambitious. Uh huh. So kind of I, the human ability. Yeah. So I get an extra talent roll at first level. Yeah. Okay? Which is kind of huge. Yeah. So that's awesome. So that's coming up in terms of talents because our next thing is our class. Yes. And of course, we already know, Joe, because people have met me here on the Ultimate Effort show. Yeah. I am making a Going fighter. for a fighter. Human fighter. Here we are. Yes, folks. I'm sorry. I just did a dab. <laughs> I'm sure. Isn't that what they call that? Did I do that right? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> these, these kids these days. Right? I'm just trying to make the young ones feel uncomfortable. Because <laughs> yeah, it's right. always kind of silly when us old folks do it at the wrong time. All right. So cool perks <laughs> about being a fighter. I can use all weapons. I can use all armor and shields. My hit points, though. 1d8 per level plus yeah. my constitution bonus. Right? Yep. Which is a minimum of one. Yep. So if you have a negative con modifier, you subtract from your dice roll, mm -hmm. but to a minimum of one. But You're always going to get at least one. But in this case, it's so great. I have that 14 constitution with a plus two bonus. So what's going to be 1d8 yeah. plus two for me. So let's just see. Come on, dice gods. Hey, Ooh, nine. Uh, that's nice. Nine hit points. That's feeling excellent. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty. Yeah, you know, that's that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's feeling a little tasty. All right. Yeah. That's uh, that's already building into kind of a more tanky fighter. Can kind of sponge up some of the damage. Yeah. The other cool thing is, as a fighter, I'm a hauler, so mm -hmm. I get to add my constitution modifier if positive to my gear slots. Yeah, if positive, if, which is important. You don't want to lose those. Positive. Yeah, but that's. You know, that's so great. So yeah, that's normally cool. you can normally you carry uh and you get this bonus also. Normally it's ten gear slots plus your strength modifier. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if positive. Mm hmm um, All right. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's ten or your strength stat, whichever is higher. I read that wrong. Oh. For gear gear slots, ten or your strength stat. Gotcha. Whichever was higher for you, which I think is probably the ten. Uh, no, was so... There? Oh, it's dead on a 10. Yes. Yeah, so, but you still get to add your con modifier, whichever one of those is higher. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, weapon mastery, choose one type of weapon, such as long swords. You gain a plus one to attack and damage with that weapon type. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I am definitely going to do that. Uh, I am definitely going to choose long swords. <laughs> because I feel like any sort of fighter worth their, worth their salt... It's going to be good with a long sword. Yeah. So he's plus one 
plus one with that long sword. Um, yeah. oh, and I probably need to make a note here, Joe, in terms of my attacks now that, you know, with a long sword, I have a plus one. Yep. Plus one to attack and damage. Yep. It's definitely, and that's also a good thing. Yes. In addition, mm. add half your level to these rolls. Yep. So rounded down. Yep. <laughs> I'm only a level one, so that doesn't get me anything at level one. But the cool thing about the fighter is, right, is that as I progress, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to start to hit more frequently. So yeah, and more frequently increase damage. Basically every every other level or every even level, mm -hmm. you're gonna get an additional plus one to hit and damage with that favored weapon or with that mastered weapon. Yes. And that's pretty cool. Yep. The other cool thing that I get as a fighter is I get this grit ability. Yeah. And so it's cool about grit is I can choose strength or dex. You have advantage on checks of that type to overcome an opposing force. Uh, and the examples here are kicking in a door, uh, slipping free of rusty chains, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, it's so, the, basically non-combat checks with either of those stats. Yep, so advantage. I'm definitely going to take grit, and I'm going to do uh, strength, and uh, just make a note here that I have advantage nice. on strength checks. Okay, awesome. And then we get to talents, which, mm -hmm. remember, as a human, I get two, get two. of these guys, right? And this is a 2d6 roll to kind of randomly determine the talents that you pick up along the way. And these are the these are the same things you get when you gain a level, you know, depending on the levels, because I, I know like it's not every level you get a talent, but you end up rolling again here. And there are some there's pretty cool stuff here to, to build these characters up. Yeah. You know, the thing about this 2d6 table, right, it's going to be on a bell curve. So we're mm -hmm. going to expect to see results here probably between three to nine-ish, you know. Um, yep. But let's see... Uh... Let's see. Let's it does see. take advantage of the bell curve, you yeah. know, as as a good two d six table should. Yeah, let's let's see what we get. Seven. Ooh. Okay. Seven. Ooh. Plus two to strength, dexterity, or constitution stat. Yeah, which potentially could increase your modifier. Actually, a two, I think, no matter what, is going to increase the modifier. Yeah. For a stat. Exactly. So I think you know, in this instance, right, Joe. So if I have that 10 strength and I add mm -hmm. plus two to that, that yeah. that's going to give me, uh, that's going to turn that into a 12, which should make that a plus one bonus now. Yes, indeed. So that's pretty awesome. So I will definitely do that. Uh, so let me just make a few notes here on the sheet. So yeah. plus two to strength. Let me grab my little eraser here. Oh, <laughs> so... <laughs> That eraser is huge. Let me just, let me just, <laughs> let me just, the size. Let me just back that down a smidge because that was, woo, that that was something else. All right. <laughs> yeah, don't want to erase half the sheet in one wipe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so now I'm sitting at a plus one bonus uh, nice. to my strength because it's it went from a ten to twelve. But the cool thing is, I'm a human. I get one more roll. Epic. This is turning out good. Here we go. One more roll. A six. Ooh, a six. Wow. Pl plus one to melee and ranged attacks. That's oh, awesome. Oh, that's pretty sick. So that bumps up your bonus with your sword to a plus two to hit and a plus one to damage. Yes. Plus the strength modifier. We'll get into that when we touch, when we touch on combat. Yeah, so get my little eraser out again, and on attacks, I'm sitting at a plus two. Yep. That's that's cool, because that's melee and ranged. Exactly. So that's that's good stuff. Yeah, that's... Uh... Remember, all weapons, so you can just pick up a bow, a crossbow, whichever. <clears throat> yeah, pretty... Throw yeah. a spear. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty sick. Well, and I think, right, Joe, on... Like my sword attack, right? I'll get to add that plus one strength. So I'm actually sitting at a plus three. Yeah. With you know plus with plus three to hit and yeah, on, plus two to damage. Yeah, on on melee. Yeah. Pretty That's good stuff. Pretty awesome. All right. So that takes care of fighter, the fighter class, and all of my talents. I think mm -hmm. the next thing, right, Joe, on my list is background. Background. And that yep. is a D20 roll. Yep, page 26. Yeah, if you're following along. The folks, <laughs> right, I was just going to say that for the folks playing the home game. Yeah, so here we go. <laughs> Background. 16. 
Ooh. Ooh, I'm a scout. That is interesting. Right. You survived on stealth, observation, and speed. Which is true. Pretty good wisdom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I think it is. Yeah, I mean, my dex is terrible, but, you know, <laughs> but I'm, I'm very cautious and careful. All right. Yeah. I like that. Next up, alignment. Yeah. Which uh, the choices here are chaotic, lawful, or neutral. Joe, you know me. Mm -hmm. You've met me. Yeah. Uh, so I probably not a surprise which one I'm going for. <laughs> I'm going to be lawful. Right. Majority of characters are going to be lawful or neutral. Mm -hmm. I mean, definitely you could go chaotic because these aren't like good or evil. Yep. You know, it's it's not you know if you are chaotic, you are like the epitome of evil, and I will destroy. No, no, no. There's none of that. Yeah. Just chaotic, as it even says, you know, you're aligned with uh, destruction, ambition, and wickedness, but it's more of a survival of the fittest mentality. Yeah. You know, I love that about Shadow Dark. It doesn't even really give you the option to be evil. You know, mm -hmm. like, like evil's just evil. Like, you know, uh, that is great. All right. But I got to pick a deity here. Ooh, and yeah. uh, I, I mean, if you're at the Cheesecake Factory, you know, there's only one choice. It's, it's the Chicken Madeira. I think... Here, the same. I got to go with Madeira, the Covenant, mm -hmm. the lawful de deity. Madeira was the first manifestation of the law. She carries every law of reality, a dictate called the Covenant, written on her skin in precise symbols. That is definitely that is definitely a gal I can get behind. Oh, yeah. I am the law. <laughs> uh, that was a dreadful impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> and now you oh, know man. why Joe makes the most between the two of us. All right. <laughs> I um, actually do make twice as much. I, I just putting that out there. <laughs> what the hell? Um, <laughs> all right. So titles. Yeah. Titles. Fighter titles at level one and really level two. If I am a mm -hmm. fighter and I am lawful, I am a squire is cool yeah there's some fun titles that kind of run through here based on level <laughs> you know like that thing just what people like refer to you as got a little, got a little i got a little carried away there in my my writing it <laughs> we'll just tidy that up okay right. control z control z <laughs> uh-huh uh languages we talked about this i speak mm -hmm. common and because of my human ancestry i get one other I think mm -hmm. uh, the other common language, I think it has to be Elvish. Very nice. You know, nice. I, I just imagine, you know, in this society, you probably run into elves and dwarves pretty frequently. Oh, yeah. Uh, so there we go. Uh, and then we talk about armor class, uh, which uh, if folks are following along in terms of my sheet, that's something that mm -hmm. I have not filled out. Uh, my armor class is 10 plus my dex mod. Now, mm -hmm. here's the interesting thing. My dex modifier is a negative one. So for folks who are following along, <laughs> thanks, Joe. <laughs> My AC is a nine. Ten oh, minus armored. one is nine. That looks pretty good on my sheet. Nine hit points, nine armor class. Uh, but Ooh. I haven't picked any armor yet. So yep. note that it ultimately can get modified uh, with uh, adding armor. So Yeah, because that's, that's just no armor or anything at all, which, mm -hmm. is, which is good stuff. Yep. We talked about carrying capacity a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. And for starting level one characters, you begin with 2d6 times 5 gold yep. to, to buy your gear. Now, Joe and I figured this out the hard way. I do want to alert people, uh, <laughs> especially if you're coming from another system. Not all of the prices in the gear selection when you go to purchase things are listed in gold. Mm -hmm. There's okay. also silver pieces. Uh, yep. Denoted also, so you have to really pay attention whether something costs GP or SP, gold yeah, pieces or silver pieces in the table. Especially if you're coming out of ICRPG where we just have coin. Exactly, yeah, or just gold, you know, in some games. So yeah, yeah. be very cognizant that some things might be less. Uh, the the GP versus SP, it's a little bit hard sometimes to pick those up uh, when you're looking across the table. <laughs> so yeah. just just be aware. Uh, that we learned the hard way. But here we go. 2d6 times 5. So 4. <laughs> but times 5 is yep. 20. Yeah. 
Yeah. Good stuff. So, nice round number. Yeah. So that's not bad. So I got 20 gold uh, uh 20 gold to spend here. So let's see. I think the first thing, Joe, that I have to get, and we've talked about this, is I have to get that crawling kit. You know, yeah. the crawling kit might be literally one of the best deals out there. It's seven gold pieces. Um, but it's gonna grab you the, the starting backpack, the flint and steel, the torch, uh, two of them. Uh, mm -hmm. three rations, 10 iron spikes, a grappling hook, and 60 feet of rope. Like, 60 right. feet is, like, that's a generous amount of rope. Like, right. that's, yeah. Like you, And it's also, like, that's a very classic adventurer setup. So there's less stuff to, like, pick through the list of what you want. You could just crawl and kit, and you are squared for your adventurer's basic gear. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the other thing is that the backpack doesn't take up any gear slots, you know, so. Yes, but otherwise, it, this uses seven slots. So I got flint and steel. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got these torches. Torches times two. They take up two gear slots, respectively. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got rations. Right. right. And rations actually stack. And those three all stack into a single slot. Yep. I've got iron spikes. I've got a grappling hook. I'm having all I'm having trouble fitting all this on my sheet, Joe. My font my font's too large. All right. And I've got and I got my rope 60 feet. So that's the first thing. I've got 14 gold left. Let's see what else I can buy. The next consideration, probably the biggest one, is armor. Um right. with 14, you know, I really can't Ooh. afford anything other than leather. Um all right. well, I, I was gonna say if, if you do want that long sword, that's a that's another nine gold. You want to have a weapon. Oh man, that's right. Oh yeah, and and I only kind of and I only got fourteen. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The long sword's nine. I gotta go long sword. Good, good call, Joe. Yeah. I mean, potentially you could go with a you know a smaller style of a blade or something. The short sword is only seven. Oh, that still doesn't really get much for uh yeah. much for any armor at all. Wow. Yeah. But yeah. I think I think I got to go longsword. So right. there we are there. And, you know, that means I've got five gold left. Uh, there I am. <laughs> what what to do with five gold? <laughs> uh, I definitely can't afford any armor, so I'm kind of stuck. Uh, I th yeah. think I just got to make a note that I've got five spare gold. Right. You know, and maybe... I'll find some treasure and I can find some armor somewhere during my adventures that might beef me up uh, because nine, mm -hmm. nine armor classes feel a little squishy. Yeah. So it, it could be a little squishy potentially. Hey, yeah. But you know what? It makes sense. This guy, he didn't survive because he had cool armor. He survived because he avoided danger. Mm -hmm. um, probably expect to see me play this guy <laughs> <laughs> very much that way. And that leaves us to literally the last consideration, Joe, here on the sheet, which is my name. Yeah. And uh, I could just pick a name, but it's a D20 table, so I feel like the the ultimate effort way to handle this is you just got to roll for it, right? Oh, yeah. So I'm a human. Here, D20 incoming. What do we got? A six. Ooh, Denton. Denton. Yeah, I, I feel like he had an orthodontist practice at one point. <laughs> nope, Denton. So here we are. I've got Denton, the human fighter. He's level one. He's got zero XP. He's a lawful squire scout who uh, prays to Madeira. Um, he's got plus two. To his uh to his melee attacks and uh an additional plus one with his strength. So uh plus one because of strength. And then we talked about in terms of damage, um he's gonna pick up uh plus one because of his long sword. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to pick up do, 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 uh another one from his strength bonus, is that right? Yep, that so, is correct. So plus two damage. Make a little note there. Which is not bad. And the uh, the longsword was a D8 for damage dice for what it deals. Yeah, thank you for That's that. That's pretty all right. Yep, we'll get that added to the sheet. And we're good to go. Uh, yeah. My character in Shadow Dark is ready now to take on 
the dark. Now, we have not talked yet about the importance of torches here. And, yes. and I think before we get into it, before we see the setup, mm -hmm. it's going to be very important to talk about this piece, which is that in Shadow Dark, oh, yeah. a torch lasts one hour of real time. Yes. So here on the <laughs> Ultimate Effort Show, we're going to set a torch timer. Yes, we are. That will count down when I activate my torch. Now, if a torch goes out in Shadow Dark, all kinds of bad stuff happens. First of all, oh, yeah. the monsters start to wander out of the dark more frequently. Joe will be making some rolls, and we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, and everything gets harder to do. I mean, anybody that's gone out at night in a place with no lights, you're camping, you have to, you know, step out in the middle of the night to, you know, answer the call of nature, and it gets dark. You move slower, you can't see as well, sounds are almost scarier. You hear yes. those things in the background, you're like, what is that? Uh -huh. Like, it gets infinitely more difficult. Yeah, it gets difficult. So, yeah, I'll be at disadvantage if my torch ever goes out in the dark. Yep. And um, can't see as far. Yeah, absolutely. Like... <laughs> so, everyone, thanks for sticking with us through character creation. Yeah. Stay tuned as we get set up through the magic of television. <laughs> and we party on Alex <laughs> yeah. party, party on Joe uh, as we get set up now for uh, for taking Denton down into the shadows yes. we'll be back in one moment oh yeah sure okay yep timers hey, everyone go. welcome back uh yeah. Through the magic of television, we have now successfully set up, I hope, for yeah. our ultimate how to play Shadow Dark session with Alex and Joe. Uh, and I have more coffee. So I am ready to face the shadows. Now, Ooh, yes. If folks are looking at our setup here, they're seeing that there is a five. No, that is not that five minutes. Joe, what the heck? Oh, did the timer get all wonk wonky on you? Yeah. No. If folks are joining our setup, they're seeing a 30-minute timer. Now, Ooh. why in the world would we have a timer of 30 minutes? Yeah, I know. The torches last 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. Standard torch is one hour. Right. But in the PDF, if you go to page 111, there are modes of play, and there are lots of different, you know, a good huge handful of varieties in here but one of them is the blitz mode light timers last 30 minutes so it cuts the amount of time in your torch in half and given our format and setup here you know it to be able to see this in effect to see how a torch might go out we're we're going to be using blitz mode mm -hmm. so our torches are much quicker burns so it's yes. going to be a 30 minute timer mm -hmm. instead of a standard 60 yep cuz <laughs> Light in real time. <laughs> hey, we're just ultimate that way. Oh, yeah. 60 minutes, bah, 30. <laughs> I might even go down to 15. Ooh. <laughs> I'm kidding. Crazy, man. All right. Going in with a candle. Yeah, but there are, there are a lot of different modes. Feel free to check them out. There's some cool, great stuff there. But yeah. we're using Blitz mode today. Epic. So 30-minute timer. You'll see that when Denton mm -hmm. lights his torch here in a minute. Uh, you will see that happen. But Joe, take us yes. away, man. Oh, yes. So Denton has uh, has found his way into this small little hamlet. You know, it's a little port hamlet, nice along the river. And as you come in, there seems to be a much, a little bit of hubbub going on. You know, almost a slight panic in the air. As you can overhear people already talking about this the cobbler's son that he hasn't been seen at this point for five hours last we heard was his friend said he went into the hole they're not supposed to go into past the orchard always a bad sign mm. but in this overhear or overheard conversation all of these eaves you're dropping uh you hear somebody else say that some sailor named yuri went to investigate and nobody's seen him for about two hours now either so things are starting to feel a little more serious Ooh. And for the, you know, uh, I guess aspect of just diving right into it and hopefully not stealing your, your agency there, Denton, as a 
you know, a, a kind of champion or budding squire champion of Caldera or Caldera. We're not in volcanoes, Joe. <laughs> Madeira. There we go. <laughs> As a kind of patron of Madeira, um, mm-hmm. doing the lawful just thing, I think has uh, has agreed to go beyond this orchard where the kids were picking apples, where the cobbler's son. Who knows if it was a dare? It probably was. Kids are stupid. In the best way, in a good way. Um, but Denton has found himself here at this ancient ruin. You know, this the hole that the kids aren't supposed to play in. Ooh. Clearly overgrown, dark, dank, and uh, ruined. I do realize, folks, we have a torch here, but that's because, come on, that looks pretty awesome. Look at that. <laughs> we have to set the mood on the on the splash yeah. page. Yeah. Um, We've got shadows and dark. Yeah, I mean, I... Like, what does Denton see, Joe, when he gets up to sort of the mouth of this hole? Yeah, climbing those, you know, crumbled stairs and everything, it's just this, you know, uh, a lot of weathering and wear. Clearly some water has run down. Uh, and worn some of the stone, but in this, what looks like a natural walled cave, there are cut stairs descending down into the darkness beyond your field of view. Ooh. Okay. Nothing but kind of just that weird kind of stillness, you know, borderline echo, a little bit of perhaps dripping water somewhere deeper inside. Yep. So here but we go. But I do have to say, right there, you see... A couple dropped apples. So clearly some kid that was picking apples potentially did fall down this hole or go down this hole. All right. So Joe, I think I, I think I got to do it. I think Denton pulls out that first torch and the flint and steel and lights it up. So here we go. We got the timer going as he's, has his torch in one hand, his trusty long sword in the other. Madeira, yes. give me strength. And he wanders down into the pit. Dun, 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 dun. All right. And we descend. And okay. So Joe and I got the map sort of realigned here. Some time is ticked off on the torch as uh, Denton has sort of made his way down and found himself there in the stairs. Yeah, the natural walls had kind of more given way to carved and cut stone. Ooh, okay. And very clearly as Denton descends in that flickering light of his torch, you can very clearly see there's another bundle of apples. You know, a couple apples dropped by this Poor missing kid, this cobbler's son. Oh, man. Oh, golly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Joe, here's Denton. He's at the stairs. He's ready. He's a brand new character. He's ready to to do something. What what are his options here in Shadow Dark? Like, what what can he do on a turn? Yeah, well, I mean, on your turn, every character can take up to a near move and perform an action, which basically boils down to anything that you're going to have to roll a dice for. Yep, that's kind your of action. Thing, or, yep. or that will take time as your action. Or you could use that action to move near again. So potentially up to a far move is your whole turn, or a near move and an action. Yeah. Because Shadow Dark breaks all distances down into that close, near, far, distant. Yep, just like an index card RPG. Yep. And and so, you know, how do you define, uh, how does it define a near move? I think that's about 30 feet, right? Yeah, give or take, yeah. Yep. 25, 30 feet. You know. Yep. So Denton's going to move his uh, his roughly 30 feet here. And I think, Joe, ooh, look at that, as his torch illuminates a space. Like, yeah. I think, Joey, he comes down, and he's going to bend down and inspect these apples. Yeah, they clearly have been dropped. And uh, I think as you're kind of looking around there, like, I'm not even going to make you have a role for this. He, he's an observant character. He's spent time, you know, as as a perceptive person. So I think you can see they look like they were dropped while a kid was on the move. Oh, you know, man. you see like a little spots in the dust. You can clearly see some, some you know, slid dust across the floor moving uh, farther to the southwest. <laughs> oh. oh, Madeira. 
what has befallen this poor boy. Yeah. Joe, you know, I think I got to I think I got to call out. Ooh, all right. Boy, are you down here? And I think it just kind of the the return you get is down here, 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 here. As it kind of echoes in, roll me a wisdom for some perception. Oh, okay. So my wisdom is... Oh, boy, what are you rolling against? Yeah, is well, so first yeah. of all, my wisdom stat, right? I get a plus one bonus. Yep. So I'm 1d20 plus one. Mm-hmm. But I, I got to match that result with some sort of target number, right? Yeah, our, our DC check or our difficulty challenge. Yeah. So Shadow Dark... For environmental threats, kind of uses like a, a almost set targeting mm -hmm. uh, with an easy, normal, and hard. And at the moment, we're going to sit on that normal, which is just beat a 12, 12 or better. Okay. And that's specifically because you have light, so you can see this whole space, uh, and there is no other environmental dangers that are harrying or hindering you in any way here at the moment. Okay. So, so we are sitting on a flat 12. Yeah, so easy might be a nine target, right? Yep. Or that is correct. Difficulty. Your normal mine run of targets are probably going to be a twelve. That yep. those are normal conditions. A hard would be a, a fifteen. And indeed. And Shadow Dark takes it one step further. It even has this extreme category, right? Which is an eighteen, yeah. which is which <laughs> oh, is yeah. just nuts. Thankfully, on my wisdom check here, I'm only trying to meter beat a twelve on a yeah. on a D twenty plus my bonus roll. So here we go. Ooh, it's 10, not a hundred percent, but yeah, I think as that kind of echo fades off, um, nothing, no real return comes back. Um, you, you can definitely hear the sounds, uh, should be seeing it pretty well straight ahead of you there. That kind of, you know, a lit crackling brazier, brazier, brazier. I always say that wrong fire pit. <laughs> So that's kind of up there, you know, through that little hallway there. So you kind of just more catch like the crackling of the wood. But I think uh, unrelated to the roll, beyond that, you can just barely, I think, begin to make out glinting of some red, perhaps apples and stuff farther in. Ooh. Okay, let's see here. All right. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, it looks like I can I can get up to that area here. Yeah, on my, easily. On my, my, my near move. So... I'm going to go ahead and head on down to uh, to this area. Ooh. Yeah. But yeah, I think very clearly as you get up there, like there's ancient statues, you know, sitting side to side, you know, names are kind of, you know, scrubbed off or not scrubbed, but chipped stone fading faces are still pretty intact. So there's apparently it seems like maybe a memorial or a tomb of some kind to some fallen heroes there. Uh, but again, just ahead, you see next to a pile of apples, kind of blood splashed across the floor, and a guy who looks very much like a sailor laying dead. Yeah. Doesn't even smell yet. It's maybe two hours old. So you kind of, I think, get that inkling that perhaps this was poor Yuri. Uh-huh. Well, I think, Joe, you know, so... I, I took my near move. I think for my action, mm -hmm. I'm going to take another move. Another okay, near uh, move. Before you get up there, yeah. Uh, roll, roll me another. Uh, roll me another wisdom, real quick. Okay. Awesome. So here we go. Uh, yeah. My bonus is plus one. One d twenty plus one. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Ooh. fifteen. Yeah, without question. As you're drawing nearer to that kind of T section, you know, split out there, you, you start hearing the clattering of bones. And I think this might be something that Denton could potentially be familiar with, you know, as a kind of champion of the law. Oh. Not sure if, you know, yet if it's, I don't know, some creature yanking on the bones of something, or if perhaps it might be a skeletal force creaking and clattering its way in the dark. Oh, Madeira. It, I'm going to say, though, it does sound like it's probably 15-ish feet, 20 feet away-ish. What has this boy done? I, I'm going to come up here and do that quick, you know, because we we determined in our little fiction with him here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that quick sort of peek to the left and right 
that skittish kind of what is left and right. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I'll, I'll just drag that torch up a little bit as you peek. Yeah, I mean, I think he, wait, very he waves it out there, right? Yeah, and very clearly to that south there, there's a skeleton, blood slowly drying on its blade as it is shambling away from you to the south towards that, uh, towards that you know, uh, turn to the west down there at the bottom edge. Oh, man. Yes. Yeah, so and I as well as those apples, I think you also see perhaps some smaller scrapes in the dust that also seem to have, uh, I, I guess at first it looks like they went up to the north, but then they came down very rapidly to the south. Yeah, man. S seeing As if that, the child was running. Seeing that skeleton, I'm going to pull back quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I guess noticing that it was sort of retreating or heading in the opposite direction, I'm going to take just a minute to, to bend down and check this check this corpse here if i can yeah yeah certainly i he is loaded up with you know some some minor bits of gear um and i think most importantly i'm gonna give you a nice little bit here i i think he's got a little bit of a ragged suit of leather armor oh that you may potentially be able to uh get off of him it doesn't look too damaged oh epic so yeah oh man and I have as well to... as basic equipment, I think you know you got like a, a torch, um, perhaps another ration, mm -hmm. some such. Yep. Well, I've got to, you know, I've got to balance this with, uh, I've got to balance this with what's left on my torch. But I think, I think for sure he's got to go for it. So I think I'm going to spend just that moment, like, you know, th th this would be my, you know, the end of my turn probably. Mm -hmm. in a normal game and if we were if we were playing you know and i had gotten the initiative right which is a d20 plus my decks yeah. um if i had gotten the initiative i would have gone and then the person to my left would have gone and so on all the way until we got back to you as the dm yes in this case there's just me so things are happening pretty fast but mm -hmm. i think i have to, to you know i would end this turn joe it would be your turn i guess the the yep. monsters would move yeah and and you know skeletons are not known for their intelligence i mean everything up top is kind of rotted away in dust so i, I think i'm actually going to roll them on a hard you're not making a lot of noise here and i don't think he noticed your original call out so oh my gosh i think yeah it slowly turns oh i hear that grating of the bone that's it yeah slows. You know, it turns back to face so I think on on my turn, that's its its action is it realizes, hey, wait a minute, there's something else living up there. Yeah. Uh... And this this foul thing. Whew. Now I, I should point out, you know, kind of skipped a moment there. So basically, folks, all I did was I because the monster is not intelligent, I gave it a, basically the same thing we had Denton do, a, a wisdom check for perception to see if it noticed. Mm -hmm. what was going on otherwise it was going to continue on its purpose on where it was actually going which appears to be following the trail of that boy oh it but in it, this case it made that perception check and it is aware <laughs> that denton is there so it has turned around oh, and this is the moment where now we are going to roll initiative oh it definitely noticed i was there oh yeah with, without <laughs> question that natural 20 is like <sighs> yeah whew. It's terrible. Oh, oh, so we're doing initiative <laughs> rolls, Joe? Yeah, because I, I think I think now that it is aware of you, I think this has pushed us into like that combat aspect. Ooh, yeah, the the oh, the one good news about this thing is I hope that it's slow, but here we go. Ooh. Hey, hey. Hey, I just got it. <laughs> yep. So initiative, we're rolling dexterity. You know, so it's just a standard check with your dexterity to, you know, highest roll goes first. Mm -hmm. And in this case, that five beat the four. Yep, you got a four. <laughs> I got one. I got a D6 minus one, five. So, yeah. So, that is a blessing. Oh, yeah. That that Denton has the initiative. But I don't have time now to stop and loot this guy. Um, As I did that, you know, sort of just check him over, do I notice anything about him, Joe, that might uh indicate his identity? By any chance, like this isn't the boy, right? No, this is not the boy. This is very clearly a, a sailor. You know, the tan skin, the style of dress, 
Oh. You know, uh, the stuff he's got. This this unfortunately looks like uh, the gentleman Yuri, the sailor you had heard about that yeah. had first gone looking for the boy. And it looks like, sadly, with the, you know, slowly drying blood on the blade of that skeleton that he kind of got cut down here. Yeah, so... I'm gonna I'm gonna do that thing where I kneel down quickly because I don't have time and you know close his eyes like pull his oh, eyelids nice. shut. Nice. Uh, Take a luck token for that. Oh, nice. Epic. So a luck token. I'm gonna write that on my sheet. And no, but you know sometimes DM can award a luck token. You know for yes. exceptional RP heroism, just plain coolness. Um, each player can only have one luck token at a time. Yes. But the nice part is, is you can cash in a luck token to re-roll any roll you just made. But yes. but you have to use the new result. The, the other cool thing is if I was playing with a companion, I could give that luck token to somebody else. I could say, yes. hey, you know, great job. You know, or here, in the moment, take my luck token, right? Just just like hero coins in ICRPG. Yes, thank you. I was looking for the actual text. I'm glad you were Yeah, there. page page 79. Yep, page 79. <laughs> cool. So cool. That's awesome. Luck token on the sheet. Uh, close yes. Yuri's eyes. I say a little prayer to Madeira, like, Madeira, preserve this soul. And then I'm going to I'm gonna run up to the north. Oh, Ooh, crap. Yeah, and right <laughs> as you come around, I think you not only see that skeleton uh, and an open door to the north, Right there, which potentially from the drag marks, it looks like potentially the kid went up to that doorway, opened it, and this is where these skeletons have trundled out from. But I think this one here, this this skeleton, he is very clearly dipping down into that space as he slowly, you know, as you come around the edge and it slowly like creak and turns and starts noticing you. Oh man, I uh, I think I think to oops. I think to finish my move here, I got to duck inside that door. Nice. Ooh, and you see the unmistakable glitter of some coin oh. scattered on the ground up there to the north. Oh. A little bit of gold glittering in the dark. Oh. As and well as these opened tombs that uh, these bony dudes had popped out. Yeah, that's so. pretty epic. So I'm going to go up there and grab that for sure. So All right. He's scooping that gold into his pocket all right let's let's see how how lucky is he gonna get boom six coins oh nice six gold you're able to scoop right up oh yeah so that takes me up to 11 gold in my pocket the bad news yeah. is is that uh i don't see the boy no not here but definitely uh in the dust you know right at the doorway there there was like the footprints or so scraped through the dust of of a child and it did look like he ran back to the south where that skeleton was pursuing yeah but i think also you kind of get that idea that that skeleton right outside the door here he seemed to be moving with purpose too uh -huh. like perhaps these skeletons are in some weird animalistic way trying to surround their quarry oh god well it's i mean it's your turn so I assume yep. that they're moving in the darkness. Yes, they are. And uh, I I think Denton's waiting with bated breath to see if it comes to the door. Uh, and indeed, as Denton's waiting there in the flickering light through that doorway, you see the first one kind of come up and hitting into that bottleneck. Oh, man. Okay. But clearly does not have the, uh, the capacity or the movement to fully get himself up there. Yep. These dusty, rickety, dry bones. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, man. Okay. And that is my turn. Yeah, that's epic. So I think I gotta, I think I gotta try to get around this guy. I don't want to get locked into a battle with this dude, <laughs> at least not yet. So I think I'm gonna, I think Denton's gonna try to kite this guy, maybe. So nice. I'm gonna come over here and use this sort of tomb as a, you know, like as a, like a barrier, you know, like putting the putting Ooh, the table yep. and the chair between me and an adversary, right? Nice. And I'm I'm just gonna bang my shield or shield. I'm gonna bang <laughs> my sword on the maybe on the stone a little bit, like ting ting. 
Ooh, nice. Come and get me, foul beast. Nice. But but my hope is, Joe, if it... I'm going to try to seize the advantage because I can move a little bit faster than it can. If it starts to mm -hmm. come around that corner at me, I'm going to make a break for the door on my turn. But it's DM's turn as I make that play, so let's see what happens. Yep, and, and it was a great play. But certainly, that, that skeleton does come clattering in towards the uh towards the thing i think you you hear a little bit of those boned movements echoing down the hall and i almost think this guy gets in i'm, I'm gonna put him at disadvantage because of the thing but i think it tries to take a hasty swing over the top oh, of that okay but i am gonna put him here at disadvantage so i'm gonna roll 2d20 and he is going to take the worst result okay so joe yeah go slow on these so the first one okay roll them one at a time yeah we could definitely do that yep yep Oh, Ooh. a 19. That would have that would hit me. Ooh. Ooh, the 15. So the worst of the two is a 15, but unfortunately, man, unfortunately, it's still going to be a hit. Yep. All right. And uh, skeletons have a D6 uh, damage on this rusty short sword here. Ooh, oh, that is man. a That's brutal, brutal hit. Five. So yeah, as he clips for five. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So I was at nine hit points. I'm now down to four. Oh, I yep. man, one more of those, and I'm gonna drop. So, and I think as you as you kind of you know wince or cry out a little bit as that blade just catches, you hear kind of echoing in the darkness, the scared voice of a child. Hello. Oh man, boy, is that you? Help! I want my mom. Oh man, kind of echoing out. And that is your turn, sir. Okay. All right. Well, this this is not good. So I, I think true to plan, I have to leave this guy. So I'm gonna hastily run past him. Yep. I'm easy to, to make it by him. So much room. Yeah, I'm instantly going to see this skeleton in the hallway and i i think i gotta try to take a take a hit on it i i realize Oops. that i am risking everything here but now spur to action i have to get to this boy madeira give me strength and i'm gonna make the attack with that trusty longsword nice nice so, now enemies do have their own armor classes that are kind of outside of that basic environmental 12 yeah great point um, joe yeah and and you know just for full transparency for how we're pulling this off uh, i'm just gonna flat out let you know that the skeletons have an ac 13 because okay. you are noticing they're wearing some rusted and potentially potentially useful chain mail mm -hmm. that is still ragged and tattered and rusting away on him yeah oh you know what joe the thought just occurred here maybe it's Denton is sizing that up i think the better play here and maybe to introduce another mechanic is to try to push past yes this, i was hoping you'd do that this skeleton <laughs> in the narrow hallway and the nice part about that is i have advantage on non-attack strength rolls so yeah so for anybody watching like any character can move through an enemy through the space there's no attacks of opportunity or any nonsense um but you just require a strength roll yes yeah, strength strength or dex. Right through, through. yes yeah, strength or dex yep, or dex yeah. yeah to try to get past um but i have advantage on strength rolls um my strength is i think plus one to my bonus here mm -hmm. so here we go so here's the first roll to try to move past oh yeah oh, a 17 and a 15 yeah 17 on that advantage nice so right and this is something that is not against the monster's armor class this is back to our environmental 12 meter beat the 12 yeah so denton's gonna push past and i think he's gonna head to this alcove to the south mm. and kick open this door in his flight nice yeah and his light spills in there i think you could definitely get in you see who is probably, you know, this tomb in the middle, which is probably the, you know, honored person of this. You know, the other's probably some of his, you know, folk or people. But um, 
Yeah, as you step in, there it is. Hiding behind one of these statues all curled up. The cobbler's son. He at first, <gasps> but then seeing that you are not, you know, bony Tony and his cronies out there. I'm so sorry, everybody. I had to. <laughs> but seeing as you are not that, he leaps up and comes running. <gasps> and throws his arms around you, crying in tears. Ah, uh, Madeira, help us. Boy, we have to get out of here. But, I, Joe, I know those skeletons are right on my heels, so I gotta, you know, do that thing where I push him behind me, and I gotta swivel to face that door. Nice. Yeah, and sure enough, as it comes back around, that first one gets into the hallway, and you can hear, like, that clattering of bone coming the other way. And I think, more importantly, you also hear a muffled clatter of bones at that door to the south. Oh, man. And as you kind of flash a glance back there, hey, there's a little bit of glitter or some more gold. <laughs> oh, it's going down right here. Oh, I got four <laughs> hit points. Oh, man. Oh, and my torch is sputtering. No! Oh, yeah, it's getting close. <laughs> All right. We are down to mere minutes before you are thrust into darkness. Yeah, it's the DM's turn. Like, I think... Well, I, I think that was my turn. That as as things, uh, I'm not sure if you could still see the others, but they are all those three that you are aware of up top are all kind of converging in around here. Oh yeah, because they're oh man, because these things are super super slow. Yeah, right. so that that front one just barely got kind of into that hallway, getting to the threshold of the door, but okay. I don't think he actually gets in enough to take a swing, as it's still kind of you know the hell it has to spin back around after you muscled your way through him oh yeah oh yeah gotcha oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah they're so slow it takes him like 10 seconds to like kind of make the turn <laughs> yep especially right. after being jostled and slammed into the wall on your run past all right then i think he's got it all right boy come on we must go and i run south and kick open that door yeah and thankfully you just see a single skeleton at that side yep and this is the moment of truth. That long sword, like, comes up. Yes. Oh, that torch is getting low. All right, I got a plus three on this as I make an attack with the long sword. So here we go. 1d20 plus three. 18. Yes. Nice. <laughs> D8 plus my two damage. Nine damage. Oh, yes. That long sword comes through. Yeah, impact smashes and knocks this thing back. Um, it is not quite enough to kill it, but I think it is enough as pieces of bone start to splinter and crack and break away from a hell of a hit. Because I'm telling you, it is it is so close. It is so close. Yep. But I think in that instance, just the knockback and the bones that are falling out, I think it has lost its opportunity to attack. Oh, and it's not me just me being nice. These are brittle old skeletons, so they are kind of falling apart. Oh, gotcha. But the other thing I think I got to do, you know, as, as it comes to my turn behind you, you can see them all starting to stack up. And what's more, I'm going to roll a little timer. Ooh, that is a benefit. As uh, you slowly start to hear stirring inside the tomb and stone beginning to slowly slide. Oh, man. Okay. And something else is coming out of that central tomb there. Oh, man. And Joe, my torch goes out. Boom. All right. Here we go. Oh, uh, no. Oh, let's uh, delete that. And the other big thing I got to do real quick here. Boop. As you are thrown into darkness. Oh, oh no. It's yeah. your turn. Yeah, and this, I mean, but I do know that this thing is right in my face. So. Oh, yeah. I, but I, he's got to like swing I out. Think I think I did give you still like a smaller little field of light as you feel the kid like right up behind you. Yeah. So you should have like bare vision. Yeah. That kind of what you can see and feel in the dark. I got to take a <laughs> swing at this thing. I got to try nice. to end it so we can get a torch relit i don't have time so the long sword's gonna snake out where i think that thing was mm -hmm. but now that i'm in the dark i'm at disadvantage right 
Oh, yes. So that is going to be, uh, so basically right now, all of our natural environmental stuff, it's going to be up at that hard 15. Yeah. So, uh, and this skeleton, of course, is going to be, you know, he's still a 13, but oh, stop timer. Yep. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, at disadvantage to, to still only hit that 13. All right. So here's my first roll an 11. Ooh. Yeah. That would, uh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to make it, but I have a luck token. Yes. I was going to remind you about that in case. Cool. Yep. So I'm going to re roll one of those. Mm -hmm. And well, oh, it's oh, that's re-roll. Right. You're rolling a disadvantage. You get to re-roll them both. Oh, epic! Because it's you get to you, you unfortunately have to keep the worst of the two. But this re-roll, you do get to roll both of them again. All right, come on, big money, no whammies. Oh, oh man. no! Yeah, I got to take the five. So yes, yeah, yeah. so that sword snakes out and clanks into the stone. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, and you feel you know perhaps because the kid sweeping up and grappling, you know, grappling your legs because of the darkness, you know, being terrified or so. Yeah, um, and absolutely. Oh, oh man. Th this got ugly fast. I, I think with that, like, we've got a, like, this is terrifying. I think, oh, man, I think we got to push back. Ooh, okay, a little move. Yeah, so we're going to try to feel our way back to this, Maybe behind this statue. Um, okay. Yeah, and the kid is clinging to you, so he's he of course moves along with you. Yeah, because the thing is, right? I've got to get this torch relit. Like I've yeah. got one torch left, and I've I've got to focus on that because man, we're in trouble. Yep. And uh, on, on my turn, I'm going to move that down in just a little close right here as boom, that timer goes down to a three, uh, yeah. and the skeletons slowly start moving in i think you can i know you can't quite see them right now but i think you can feel the presence and hear the clattering of bones mm -hmm. closing in clearly there are more of them to the north than yep. there are to the south yeah and and i think that's that is my turn at this moment yeah so on my turn as we're huddled in that corner with that brief re retreat i'm gonna get my second and only remaining torture lit with the flint and steel like I, the boy's holding the long sword real quick, and he's like tsh, 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 striking it up, and I'm gonna get it started here, Joe. So, tsh. yeah, torch so back. That, yeah, so that torch is relit. That was my action, I think. Yeah, and, you still have to move. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try to push past this guy. Okay, and I, I think just for for ease, the kid kind of. Has climbed up piggyback style. Oh, nice. Boy, we must run. And I, I'm gonna try to make the strength here. Oh yeah. And we're back down to the 12. You can see there's ample light. Yep. And you have advantage on this check. Okay, yep. So here we go. The first one. Oh, the seven's Ooh. not good. Come on, advantage. Yeah, 19. Boom. Yes. You blast your way, knocking that thing back. Yeah, so clattering it to the ground. We must go. Yep. And the kid is right there clinging to your back, squeezing a little bit. I want my mom. <laughs> Terrified. Madeira, look after us. Oh, man. Ooh, and I think I might turn that timer drops to two. This guy was knocked down, so I don't think he's getting up yet. The The injured one. But behind him, you can see those skeletons kind of traipsing in through that doorway, following up. That's that's my turn. These are these are not fast fast guys here. Oh man, I hope. <laughs> God, let's see if we run into more of them. But I think, I think my move is to run as quick as we can, and then. And then for my action, I'm just going to take another near move. Nice, and nice. We're going we're to round that corner and and roll for it. Nice. Like there's there's no time to dawdle. We just gotta. <laughs> right, it's got to happen. The run. Yeah, because uh, as we determined, you know, in Denton's background, right, like he, you know, he made his way like being cautious and careful as a scout. So he's. 
Yeah. He, he's not, you know, just going to stand toe to toe. He's just got to roll. Right. Of course. Yep. Yeah. And our timer in that tomb drops down to a one as you begin, you can hear it echoing through that, <sighs> that stone on stone is, you know, the, the lid of that uh, sarcophagus is opening up and, uh, <gasps> Oh no. Yeah, as as something else is popping out of there. And of course these guys whoop, get out of the way. Just moving some skellies as they're kind of all stacking up back in that hallway. Uh-huh. And I think up ahead of you, just barely picking into the light, you see another one peeking out, mm -hmm. moving its way through. All oh, those side doors I didn't check. Oh, they're they're yep. all coming. And that is back to you. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> I got to take the near move. Oh, man. Yep, that door now open, kind of pushed open. You see three more of them coming in. Oh, God, we've got to. You know, I, I think you're near. I think last time we determined, I think it's, I think you got a little bit more than that. Yeah, that. that's right. I think we're seeing that. I think we're going to exfil a little bit to the north here. Mm -hmm. Boy, quickly. We must try to make it to the stairs. Only the light of day can save us, Madeira. Preserve us. And, uh... <laughs> but that takes us back to your turn, Joe. <laughs> well, no, you, you, you still got an action. That was only our move. Oh, man. Can action or, or move again? It. I think it's got to come down to this, so... He takes that other move... He's going to tuck the boy in, you know, behind him. Yep. Oh, oh, man. Keeping yourself between enemies and the boy. Yep. Take another luck token for that. Yep. But it, I think it's going to come down to this. And I, I think, think if you'll permit me a bit of RP here, mm -hmm. he has that moment, you know, where he, he kind of bends down and he's like, you know, puts the boy down and he's like, listen to me. Whatever happens, you run for the stairs. Run, go back to your mother. And then Ooh. it's your turn, Joe. <laughs> All right. On my turn, somewhere in the back, somewhere deeper in, you hear the massive crunch and crack as that stone sarcophagus hits the ground. <laughs> and you hear this, who disturbs my slumber? Oh. Kind of echo through. No, the and skeleton I, king again. <laughs> oh my gosh, have I been running the skeleton king? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. I'm so glad you kept it. I 100% was running us the skeleton king, just like our last one. Uh huh. This is epic. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I think at least one of these guys has a swing on yep, you. Yep, here it is. I got four, nine AC and four hit points. Flat roll. Yes! Oh, suspense dice. And he misses! Yes! Oh. Yeah, Adira didn't. is with you as the blade whips over the top of your head as this thing is wildly swings. Yes! Oh, man. Ooh, I just got a couple of the guys to move in the background. Nobody back here can reach you, uh, so that's a good thing. Um, but, boom, that Skeleton King perhaps seems a little faster than the others as he, uh, as you see him just creep around the corner on the other side of that fire pit <laughs> yeah we we are flat terrified at this point so yep. and that is back to you sir yep so with the kid i think side by side we're running running for the stairs trying to leave this cursed place behind yeah and i i think with that double move getting you know you basically can get yourself up to that top edge of the stairs that's that's exactly what we're doing we're we're um yeah Taking my near move and then using my action to take another near move, and we're just bolting for it. Nice. So let's uh let's pop back to here. I probably just ruined the whole view of everything. <laughs> no. Uh, nope. It's uh, it's perfect. Hooray! <laughs> there we go. The little kid. Yay! Oh man! Hailing the champion as you guys breach back up into the into the light of the sun. Yeah, somewhere deep in the ground behind you, the clattering of bones 
and an awakened skeleton king. Yeah, we I got to run and warn the town. <laughs> I got to put this torch out. So we'll we'll stop that timer. I got a little bit left on that guy and uh <laughs> I got to go warn the town. So oh man. Yeah. Joe, that was epic, dude. That was so good. <laughs> And, um, Yo, that was awesome, man. That was that was good stuff. Yeah, that was super good. I think hopefully we have showcased uh, all of the basic mechanics in terms of Shadow Dark. You know, as a as a character on your turn, you can move and take an action, or take an action and then a move. Uh, those moves can be uh, you know near um, you know take up to a near move on your turn, mm -hmm. just about thirty feet or so. Um, and uh, excuse me, having taken that. You can then take an action, mm -hmm. uh, which can include taking another move, yep. or you can make a check, like to, you know, suss something out about your environment, or kick yeah. open a door, or brush past light a skeleton, a light a You torch. know, I don't think I would count opening a door as an action. I think that's something you just do. If it was locked, I think I would require an action to either oh, yeah, muscle yeah. smash through it or, well, or pick the lock or some such. Yeah, I said kick open, you know, right? Like if you're trying yeah. to, yep, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, um, and then you know, in terms of you know, swing a sword, attack, all those sorts of things that you could do in terms of your action. Um, so those are the basics in terms of character. I think we uh, character play. I think we showcased that uh, on the DM side. The DM is responsible for moving the enemies the same way. Um, in general, the target is an environmental target. It's either going to be an easy nine, a normal mm -hmm. twelve, a hard fifteen, or extreme eighteen, yeah. um, and then. Uh, against enemies, they have an individual armor class. In this case, these skeletons, man, they're super hard to hit with an armor class yeah. of 13, especially for a beginner level character, especially yeah. playing single player mode because we're crazy yes. people. <laughs> yeah, but I guess there is a benefit that, you know, if you dropped one of those skeletons that had time to loot, there's a 50% chance that that chainmail they are wearing is usable. Yeah. It's still good enough that you could have donned that as well. Yeah, for sure. Oh, man, I hate the fact that I missed out on grabbing that armor from Yuri, but you know what? I didn't have time. I didn't have time in the right. Shadow Dark, right? But I came right. back with uh, uh, six extra gold, so that was a big yep. deal. Right? Yeah, you could buy a shield. Yep. And, <laughs> but most importantly, I saved the kid, um, yeah. and, that, and that was great. Hopefully, we showcased the mechanics. We showcased what happens when a torch runs out and things get uber hard. Uh, that was great. <laughs> I, I wasn't in the dark long enough for Joe to start to make like crazy monster spawning rolls. Um, oh yeah, because it was coming. Like I had a lot more. I, I... <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, we've got to round up a posse, right? Like you know, like mm -hmm. Diablo style now, right? Like I've got to make it back to the wagon camp and round yep. up a posse to go back down here and root out this skeleton king and his his minions. You know, so right. I, I definitely hope that that shows uh, you know some of those basic bits of how to use Shadow Dark. Um, like Alex had said, and uh, man, thanks a lot, folks. Yeah, we're super grateful for everyone for joining us. Hopefully that was helpful for you in terms of character creation and yes. how to play Shadow Dark, a brief overview of the key mechanics. Uh, if you're coming from an ICRPG background, it's going to make a ton of sense to you because, mm -hmm. you know, in essence, um, it, it is uh, sort of ICRPG with some of these more vintage elements kind of thrown in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and likewise, if you're coming from old school essentials or BNX or, uh, you know, um, fifth edition or any of those editions, uh, you know, it's it's going to feel the same. Um, it's a great game. We hope you check it out. We hope you support Kelsey. She's awesome. Yes. Uh, everyone, thanks so much for watching, uh, listening, and mm -hmm. uh, Joe? Yeah, I guess in the meantime, in the parlance of our current times, take my luck token. And always roll with advantage. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. <laughs>
<laughs> Ooh.